hindi ko malimutan. At 8 years old, binulol yung dad ko. Everybody was looking at it na kawawa naman tong pamilya na to. Hindi na mapakapag-aral yung mga bata. We really look as a very pitiful family. Dati full of hope. Tapos namatay yung padre de familia, kawawa naman ito. Faced with difficult circumstances many times in my life, I always look back noon sa that episode in my life. That very sad moment, parang yun ang naging inspirasyon ko. Doon ako pinanganak sa Butuan City. Wala kaming kapitbahay. It's one compound basically na na kami lang magkakamag-anak ang in that compound. Masaya yung kabataan, no? yung laro namin na siyatom, patintero. Pag maliwanag ang buwan, tago-tagoan. Walang kuryente doon, kaya ako magaling ako mag-uling. Lima kami magkakapatid, so may kanya-kanya kami toka na trabaho. Nakatoka sa akin, basta pagising ko ng umaga, ako taga scrub. After that, ang additional assignment ko, ako taga linis ng tangkal ng baboy namin. Then, pre-prepare na ako for school. And then, siguro once a month, Pupunta uli ako sa river, dala ko na yung kalabaw para manghila ako ng maliliit na puno na naanod na sa river. No, para meron kaming panggatong for the next few weeks. Uh, yun ang nakagisnang ko na buhay. Parang I just rolled with the punches. Sinabi ng mother ko na ang priority niyo mag-aral. Pangalawa, gawin niyo yung trabaho niyo, yung responsibilidad din sa bahay. After that, pwede kayong maglaro all you want. My father died when I was eight years old, so konti lang ang memories ko about him. Malala ko lang sa father ko. He was a caring father at the same time very strict and parang difficult to please. Father ko may asthma for about two weeks. Almost every other day, dinadala siya sa clinic for checkup. That day, February 27, 1970, checkup niya habang siya. Karoon siya ng massive heart attack habang nakaupo. And hindi na siya nakarecover doon. For four years, imagine araw-araw pagkagaling sa eskwela, dadaan kami sa simenteryo. Pag uwi sa bahay bago kami kumain, nagro-rosaryo kami every single day. Sakit talaga tuhod ko talaga yun. Sabi ko, napaw, ito na naman. Pupunta na sa isang tabi yung mother ko. Iiyak siya, nag-iiyak. Napaka-gloomy nung bahay namin for four years. Tagal siya maka-get over for the loss of my father. So I think all of us uh, take that as an inspiration that we can makabangon kami na may angat namin yung sitwasyon namin at that time. Kita naman namin lahat mga kapatid. Walang ginawa ang mother namin kundi Everything she can do to uplift the condition of the family, mapag-aral kami. She never gave herself any form of luxury. Wala at all. Lahat ng klaseng negosyo na alam ng mother ko, pinasok niya. Nagpiprint kami ng mga PE uniform. Nag-aral ng mother ko paano gumawa ng mga stencil. Mayroong taga silk screen. Paggabi, puno yung pampayan. Naging retailer siya ng NGA, National Grains Authority pa nung araw, ngayon NFA. Nung mag-short ang bigas nung araw, naranasan namin. Natulog pa kami. Nakapila na sa labas ng bahay namin. Ako nakatoka doon sa negosyo niya ng bigas. Sa totoo lang, ang dream namin, tingin ko, lahat kami magkakapatid. 
mabigyan namin katuparan yung gusto ng mother namin na magtapos kayo. At that time, sa aming magkakapatid, parang mahirap na na mangyari. But ang sinasabi ng mother namin na whatever happens, you have to get a good education. Pagka-graduate na pagka-graduate ko ng high school, pinaluwas na ako ng mother ko sa Maynila. Nag-promise yung kapatid niya, si Uncle Jose, na papuntahin mo siya, si Ronald dito, tutulungan ko yung makaanap ng trabaho. Makakapag-aral yan as a working student. A week after my graduation, sakay ako ng barko, pumunta ako na Maynila, at mag-umpisa na ako maghanap ng trabaho. Nobody expected na may tumawag sa amin na pinsan. Si Bibi, Bibi ang tawag nila sa akin sa butuan eh. Si Bibi pumasa sa UP, Coco Fed Scholar. I can enjoy that scholarship ko ang pag-aaral lang ko, agriculture. It was never a choice. Nagkataon lang, so, but ay, nung nag-aaral ako, it was close to my heart, lumaki ako sa agricultural community. Mas interesting nga, in fact, sa akin, yung naging kurso ko doon sa UP. Gusto ko makatapos ka agad. Every semester, nagdadagdag ako ng load. But dahil maluwag na ako, nakita ko sa may nakapaskin doon, wanted student assistant. Ang trabaho ako, nag-apply ako. Doon, nakita naman ng mga professors doon. To, matalino to si Mascarinas, Masipag, kahit ano naman ay utos nila sa akin. Janitor ako doon sa laboratory. Ako mag mamap, maglilinis ng test tube. But I enjoyed it dahil may extra income ako. So it paved the way. Nakilala nila ako. Kaya ang Ayala nung 1981, kabibili lang nila ng Pure Foods. Ayala wanted to expand Pure Foods to agribusiness. Nagganap sila. So one of our professors <clears throat> na may master's degree, yun ang napili nila. Fortunately or unfortunately, nakakuha siya ng PhD scholarship sa US. So he opted to get that. Naiwan na bakante ngayon yung slot ng farm manager ng Pure Foods. Sinong pwedeng kapalit? Sabi nila, meron kaming pag-graduate si Mascarinas. Matalino, masipag pa. Kaya ako in-endorse. Ako lang ang in-endorse nila. Normally interview, di ba? A few minutes. Yung akin, isang oras. Because the HR manager, sabi niya, hindi ka pwede. Wala ka experience eh. We don't hire fresh graduate para maging manager. At pinangatawa lang ko talaga. Sabi ko, what kind of experience do you need? Siyempre, commercial scales. Sinasabi ko, yung experience ko. Mas grabe pa yun kaysa experience nung farm manager nga ng commercial. So, if you talk of experience, I have more experience, deeper experience than the farm managers. So, eventually, baka napagod. Ayaw kong mag-give up talaga. So, hinayar ako as assistant man. What I demand from people working with me is just put an honest day's work. Kung balong oras ka nagtatrabaho, sulitin mo lang yan. Ako nga lang siguro ang empleyado ng Pure Foods na nagtrabaho ng dalawang taon na walang day off, walang holiday. Kasi... Taga Mindanao ako, wala naman akong uwihan. Monday to Sunday, nasa farm ako. There was an instance may delivery ng feeds. Dalawang truck. Ang isang truck is about 200 bags, natin 50 kilos. So yung workers sa farm ayaw na magdiskarga dahil pahinga na. Ba't mo lang kakainin yung manok namin the following day? Sabi ko doon sa feed mill driver, ipasok niya yan sa farm. Ako magdi-discarga niyan. 400 bags. Binaba ko yun isa-isa. Kinakamada ko pa sa poultry farm. I think the most difficult part of my work at Pure Foods was 
after working for 19 years, sinabihan kami na nabili na ng San Miguel ng Pure Foods. In a snap, we realized all of us can lose our jobs. So at that time, in 2001, I was senior vice president of Pure Foods. I was head of the poultry business already. So lahat ng empleyado namin was looking after sa akin na para akong tatay nila. Expecting na I will take care of them, I will provide them jobs. Tremendous pressure na nararamdaman ko noon na umaasa sila sa akin. And at the time sabi ko, ano ba magagawa ako dito? And we are a very close-knit organization. Kilala ko yung mga asawa nila, kilala ko yung mga anak. The emotional attachment with the employees of Pure Foods was so strong. Parang isa kami malaking pamilya. Among other options, yung offer ng uh, Cheng family ang pinili ko. Kilala ko naman yung Cheng family because they were a member of the industry association. So ang offer nila sa akin, we will finance a new company for you. I made a decision to take that gamble. We'll start a new company. Lahat ng mga empleyado sa Pure Foods na nawalan ng trabaho were redundant. Lahat yun inabsorb ko. So that's how Bounty Agro started. With people who lost their jobs sa Pure Foods. Para akong nag-umpisa uli. Para akong parang you employee uli. Ang normal work hours talaga namin noon, pag may meeting, we start at 7 o'clock. And lahat kami nag-uwi at 10, 11 o'clock in the evening. Ako, yung kotse ko, palaging meron na akong gamit talaga doon. Pag tumawag yung alimbawa, manager ko ng Bicol, boss, we have a prospective business partner dito. Pag nakausap mo to malamang makukuha. Pag sinabi niya yan, punta akong Bicol. Then balik uli ako. I travel. Travel 12, 14 hours. Well, I don't regret them because no, they were given another chance. I've never seen these people work so passionately. Na yung gabi ginagawa nilang araw, just to ensure that we will succeed, that we will be highly competitive in the industry in two years' time, from zero. Start up kami. We were the second biggest poultry integrator in the country. I started my career as a hard killer. Since then, nagpalit na ako ng anabuhay ngayon. Naglilitso na kami ng manok. Dati, pumapatay ako ng mga manok. Yung Chooks to Go, hindi naman namin sinadya to expand the business. Uh, it was really a defensive uh, move on our part. Kasi in mid-2000, niro-roll out na yung ASEAN Free Trade Agreement. Why will the fast food chain buy, buy from us if they can buy from ASEAN na mas mura? Siyempre, nag-trial kami. Sampung tindahan. So ang average sales namin ng eight stores siguro, wala pang, wala pang sampu. So laki talaga ng lugi. Tinignan ko lahat ng mga tindahan. Pagdating ko ng Tacloban and Ormoc, phenomenal naman ang success doon. Na yung mga tao, nakapila na napakahaba. Hindi yung para bumili ng manok. Pipila sila, magbabayad. Bibigyan sila ng sleep. Bukas pa nila makukuha yan. Dahil yung lahat ng niluluto for the day, bayad na yan the previous day. Kaya pagpasok ng 2008, I was so confident. We have a winner, we have a business. Yung aming flagship brand, Chooks to Go, is di ba, masarap kahit walang sauce. There's still a big population in the Philippines na hindi talaga kakain ng manok pag walang sarsa. That's why we came up with real. Mas masarap pag may sauce. Ito na ang kalaban talaga ng, ng uh, Chooks to Go. We let them compete in the marketplace. And then, ito yung uling roasters. Na hindi masyadong masarap. I'm happy. Uh, today, all those 
all three brands are very successful in the market. I just feel very blessed and fortunate to have a very supportive wife, you know, my wife Lita. Especially when I was building my career at Pure Foods. Parang siya ang naging tatay at nanay ng mga anak namin while they were growing. Very supportive and understanding. He knows what I'm doing. Wala na ako halos oras sa kanila. But buo tiwala niya sa akin na I was doing it for, for them. Pareho kami ko ang kasi fresh graduate no? nung pumasok sa Pure Foods. Sinusuka ako ng mga tao ko doon. Lahat sila galit sa akin. Because I just don't know. Pag kamali ka, pagkagalitan kita. Including si Lita. Siya ang pinakamaganda. Pinakasexy sa buong Pure Foods. Wala nang mas maganda doon. At sexy. Siya lang. Kasi siya lang isa babae sa farm. <laughs> Magkaaway kaming mortal niya, ang galit. Ang tawag niya sa akin, ayan na si Paquito Diaz. I was really attracted to her. Nung the first time I saw her, attracted na ako. Kaya lang, siyempre, ang priority ko, trabaho. But it's a long story. Nabigani rin siya sa bigote ni Paquito Diaz. <laughs> I'm lucky now sa Bobby, nung napalaki na namin, I can spend a lot more time with my family. Even now, pag nag-uusap kami ng mga anak ko, they're all adults now, yung tatlo, wala akong madidinig at all na resentment. And I can only attribute that to how well my wife filled up my shoes, even with my absence. Because my wife was there all the time. Ang nasabutuan ako, paborito ako na hugot. Wala siguro kayo makita ang basketball player na ang average, day in, day out, tuwing laro. 40 points. Hanggang andito ako sa Manila, yun talaga ang average ko. Natigil lang yun nung nagising ako, na naginip lang pala ako. <laughs> we realize, ang Pilipino, mahal na mahal nila yung basketball. We don't look at it just as a game. We look at Gilas as the source of inspiration for our people. Because ang Gilas Pilipinas team natin, dihado sa tournament. Dahil hindi naman tayo kalagihan. We're always really underdog in the world stage. But the team continues to fight. Kahit maraming tao ang sinasabi nila, wala naman pag-aasa yan eh. Yan ang inspirasyon na binibigay ng Gilas. The possibility that one day they will be winning and play again sa Olympics. Mabuhay! ang mga manok ng bayan. Yung hashtag na manok ng bayan, it's really the mission of the company to support our national athletes. No? Hindi lang sa basketball, we're now supporting volleyball, uh, our triathletes, and very soon yung ating mga uh, Philippine warriors, yung uh, basketball players natin on wheelchair. When it comes to sport, they unite. And we want to be a part of that. We want to support to further the unity of our country. Ang pangarap ko lang talaga makatapos ako ng pag-aaral, makakuha ng trabaho. That's all. And I, know, I never imagined, no? A lot of luxuries na I never imagined, na hindi ko pinangarap. But God is so generous sa pamilya ko. Na parang, parang umuulan ng grasya sa, sa family. Hindi expressive ang mother ko sa ganyan, but we know she is proud of all of us. Kasi matanda na si Mami, so nakakasama ko yan, sometimes sa airport. Pag may nakatabihan na stranger, magkukwento yan. 
and napapakinggan ko she's talking about our achievements ng mga anak niya the way we were raised by our mother was to really look at everything as blessings in any situation you can look it either way di ba is it a problem or is it an opportunity but kahit anong problema I went to, and I get up, and there are more blessings than problems. I always count my blessings, and it ties me through you know, and overcome mga challenges sa buhay because there is just so many blessings if you just take time to count it.